came in without a plan. We just took ideas and got people's feedback on what they liked, what we, they didn't like, what ideas they had. We, we, we documented all those ideas, and those are going to be in the uh, in the appendix of the plan, which is online. So you can go online and review the plan if you like. Go to the township website. The second meeting, we came in and we had some initial concepts for where the trails might go. Uh, since that since that point, we've made a lot of a lot of revisions. Uh, the third public meeting, we had a draft plan. We went through the uh, review of the draft plan, uh, which, which uh, again we've made changes since that point. We did have an online survey. We had about 475 responses. And, and that's also the results of that are also in line. Some of the things, uh, you know, here are some of the questions, some of the results. Are there enough greenway facilities within the township? And of course, the Radnor Trail is your most prominent trail. It's very popular, and the answer is no. 67% said we need more, some more trail facilities. Um, where, where do you go? Uh, what schools do you visit for recreational purposes? Because whether they're the public high schools or some of the private universities, they function as de facto open space because most of the campuses are quite beautiful. So you can see the, um, the, the trips per year that, that uh, we got in terms of response to that. Uh, people go to Villanova maybe 20 times a year. Some of the households have responded and you can see the other results. So this tells us it's important to make sure we link the trails to these institutions, not only for township residents who might use it, but obviously all the students who have to go back and forth to these institutions so they have a safe alternative rather than driving an automobile. Uh, or hopefully they're taking mass transit sometimes. Uh, you walk or jog in these parks and natural areas. Uh, and uh, a lot of people said, yeah, they, they uh, uh, like, to, like to walk or jog or bicycle to these places. So again, that tells us we should, we should try to make sure we have connections, safe connections to those facilities. You have a great park system, and it's, uh, you know, it's sometimes a little um, crazy if you have to get in your car and drive to the park. It'd be great, so hopefully some of the parks, when the system is in place, you could actually walk or take a bike. And so could your kids or grandkids. And then how important are public parks, and that, how important are public parks, natural areas, and open space, trails, and greenways, and recreational facilities? So we asked, you know, what are the most important? And interestingly enough, and maybe because this is a study about trails and greenways, that 84% said the trails and greenways were very important to folks. And that's just one percentage point over parks. So at least we're as high as parks in terms of the importance that people puts that people put on greenways and trails, which is good. Certainly higher, a little bit higher than uh, open space. Again, pretty close. And then uh, recreational facilities. So again, the good, the good news is here, and I'm sure there's some, uh, you know, this is a sort of a self-selecting survey because people decided they wanted to take it. It wasn't like we sent out random things. But at least, I think the, the thing to take from this is trails seem to be as important as everything else in, in the township recreational system in terms of facilities. So that's, I think that's the takeaway there. So um, the major scope items you can see here was to, first of all, develop this greenway and trail network to plan for it. Look for how we can connect regionally to other trails in the region because uh, uh, we are fortunate that we live in an area that is really gung ho about trails and lots of trails being developed in the region. Uh, make recommendations regarding uh, management and maintenance of these greenways. Look at an implementation strategy. Also identify potential funding sources. And before the meeting, we were talking with members of the committee about moving this forward and applying for some money. Uh, next April, which is the next round for the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. So we hopefully the township will do that. Also look at criteria for acquiring open, acquiring and selling open space. Look at uh, how stormwater management gets incorporated here. How do we connect the historical and cultural aspects and uh, how does the shade tree ordinance uh, impact here. Trails 101, very quickly, the, 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 the types of like anything else, trail uses are put into types. Tri type A are the, the, the folks uh, who you know, wear spandex and go a million miles an hour and not, they're not afraid of cars. That's a, that's a smaller user group. Type B is your basic cyclist. They might 
those of us who might go on the road once in a while, we'd rather not, we'd rather be on an off-road trail. Uh, and that's, that's the biggest group. And then we have ch Group C child cyclists. Uh, these are younger kids who you wouldn't want to be out on the road with. They really want to be in an off-road situation. So we're trying to provide for everybody, just like people, trails have classification. Class one is an off-road system like the Radnor Trail where you're not having to deal with vehicles and it's away from motor vehicles. Class two would be a designated bike lane that's for the exclusive use of cyclists. Sometimes these are separated from uh, vehicular traffic. You see plenty of them in, in Philadelphia. Uh, and then you have class three, which are bike routes. Um, these are usually defined by signage that just share the road. And the new sign from PennDOT actually says useful uh, lane width or something like that. U useful lane width, which is the replacement for share the road, which says the bicyclists you can use the whole lane. In cars, the motors, when we're in a car, we have to control our crazy urges and give them room. I mean, there's a new law that you have to go around, uh, give people four feet if you're on a bike. So that's the new law. So that change in signage reflects that from PennDOT. So um, I mentioned we're in a good place for regional trails. You see Radnor in the center there, and you see the major existing trails, which include the Schuylkill River Trail, Going further up north, the Perky Yeoman Trail, if you've ever had a chance to ride that, I was on that this weekend from Collegeville up to Green Lane. It's gorgeous. It's a wonderful ride. It's very flat because it used to be a railroad, so uh, it's, it's uh, you just take your time. And then all these other dotted blue ones are planned, uh, and, and then uh, some, some of those in purple are recommended for funding. So the bottom line here is the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission, along with William Penn, who's funding a lot of these, have made the Super Highway of Trails a major initiative in the region. And the reason they're doing that is because it's fun, it's good exercise that leads to healthy communities, healthy folks, and also they're good commuting routes. You'll see more and more folks. Uh, the Chester Valley Trail was recently opened in Chester County, a big portion of it. You see more and more folks commuting to work if they live in relative proximity to the, the trail and their works at the other end. One of the Chester Valley Trail goes through um, uh, Westlake's Corporate Center, and we're doing some work there. We see people now commuting to Westlake's because they can on a nice day. Why not? So these these have lots of focuses. So Radnor's right in the middle of this, and also there's another study happening uh, by another firm, a very good firm, actually the firm who did the Radnor Trail, and they're looking at the connection from Radnor all the way down along that this uh, blue. If I can get the pointer here, going the blue line coming down all the way into um, uh, West Philadelphia. So they're looking at that uh, study right now. So that's another study that's going on that involves Red, which is great. So uh, this map just shows the overall township. It's sort of similar to the map that's over there. This is like an existing condition. It shows uh, park areas and green with the school district properties, institutional with the big um, colleges, etc. cetera, and then, and then uh, blue golf courses, HOA, not captive lands, homeowners associations. HOAs, we did not really venture into those because uh, they're private open space. We sort of said, look, if you're an HOA and you want to connect to the system, that would be great, but it's private space, so we didn't venture there because we didn't feel it was critical to the, the, to the trail system. Um, we've got conservation easements and then uh, natural uh, trust easements, also natural, natural lands trust easements. So that's all documented. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jeff. He's just going to walk you through um, the major parts of the trail system. We won't hit every trail, but we'll hit the highlights. As Pete was saying, we're not going to go over every single trail, because if we did, we'd be here for a long time. So we're going to go over some of the larger ones, some of the, the bike routes, some of the uh, multi-use trails that are off-road and on-road. Uh, the proposed trail system, uh, it's, it's pretty complex. It, it encompasses the whole township. And we try to connect in major areas. I mean, obviously, we can't connect to every residence, but we try to connect to major populations or usage or institutional places. Here, we're going to look at the, um, the loop system. Basically, the loop system, even though it doesn't look like a loop there, is connecting to the Radnor Trail, which is existing. So it does become a circuit or so, which uh, you know, goes around the township pretty well. We're going to go by segments um, quickly just to look at these, uh, these segments. 
seconds here. Uh, the first one there is West Wing Avenue. West Wing was on there because we heard a lot of people wanting to connect the Radnor Trail to downtown Wayne. Um, and actually, West Wing currently gets used a lot. You see people riding both ways on a one-way street, a lot of people walking up and down because it's one of the quickest and safest routes into downtown Wayne. Next one is South Radnor Road. Uh, it's a little tiny connection. Uh, it's actually really small, but it's a little complex and it's really vital because it is the section that is going from the end of existing Radnor Trail, going down Radnor Chester, right there to Lancaster, where it would cross over into the Radnor School property that's right across the street. And that's where we get into probably my favorite trail. This trail, for the most part, is all off-road. It is going to be a really great connection you know, from the Radnor Trail. So if you envision the Radnor Trail being off-road, no cars buzzing by, this for the most part is just like that. But it's going uh, in a couple of the, the two tracks, uh, some, some parcels that a lot of people in Radnor don't know about, and they're going unused, and they're being used currently, you know, or they're owned currently by Radnor Township, and used by very few people. So we're gonna to try to utilize those spaces. Next segment um, is the necessary evil, Lancaster Avenue. Uh, we need to connect down further than Lancaster is very old, um, has a lot of right of way, and has potential for us to put a trail along the, the roadway. Also, uh, using Villanova's property. It's hard to envision it, but when you drive by, you'll see that the buildings are set back quite a bit of ways there. So we'll be able to squeeze in, the, you know, basically it would be a, an oversized sidewalk, but it would be a trail. Next is Island. Um, Island, one of the older roads in Bradner, exquisite road. Uh, really popular among places. This is an on-road route. Um, unfortunately, there's just not enough space for us to do an off-road trail from the first section. So from here, it would be on-road. Once we get down along to 476, we're going to utilize that space along the right-of-way there. So if you're driving down Ivan, you'll see that there's a sound wall and basically uh, woods. We're going to you know, put a trail along in there. Uh, the on-road bicycles will undoubtedly continue on that road. It's a low-volume road, and they love to just fly right down there because the, the grades are great right there, so it's all down. Next one is Bryn Mawr Avenue. Bryn Mawr Avenue, um, though busy, gets a lot of bicycle um, users on there. It's also a great way to connect to other townships, and that's one of the purposes of this project, was to you know, not just look at Radnor, look outside and how we're going to connect it to other townships. And this road is really, it's ideal. It's fast, it's got some good shoulders in it, it's very logical. Uh, some pinch points that we'd have to overcome, uh, we'd have to add a couple of bridges, which ups the cost significantly for that site. Next one, Darby Paoli Road. Uh, I ride this road all the time. I really enjoy it. It is scenic. It, it doesn't feel like 13 miles on the side. It feels like you're out in the country just having a great day deep into deep Chester County, watching the, uh, the cows and enjoying the good weather. Next one is Chester Road and Brook Road, um, or Church Road, sorry. sorry. Uh, this is trying to connect back into the Radnor Trail. This is another one of those that is a, you know, it's going to be an on-road bike route. It's a little bit tough, but we feel that we have enough room to get in and paint shoulders and create an adequate space for Another trail that has been in the works for years. It uh, basically reappears, reappears, disappears, and there's been a lot of talk about it. But now it's starting to look more promising, and we don't want to let go of this at the request of other people, um, and it's a good idea. And what it is, is utilizing the right-of-way along the Route 100. It's a fairly wide right-of-way. You wouldn't know it um, unless you went out there and you looked at all the fence lines, how much space there is available there. So what we're going to have in the report is say, well, there's an existing right-of-way. We're not using it. Let's do a rail width trail. Uh, it's very popular. Schuylkill River Trail off of Chester County does it and works great. You don't need much of a barrier, just a fence. Um, except the, they're kind of, literally on the fence, no pun intended, about that. So it's something that would be ongoing. It will be long-term. But if it can go through, it really would be a great opportunity. Okay, so the proposed system. 
the existing trail lines for this loop is eight miles of um, existing. So that's the Ratner Trail, uh, the other trails throughout the township. Our proposed uh, 17 miles, other trails outside of the priorities, 11 miles. That's a total of 28 miles that we are looking at for this study. Overall, that would be 36 miles if you were to go out and walk the entire trail, trail system. And I say walk because some of these are going to be walking trails. We're not going to be able to meet grades and design standards for bicycles. There are very uh, strict guidelines in what we have to follow and provide for bicycles. So that would be the cost. Uh, no one likes to see the cost, but we got to remember this is very much long term. The Radnor Trail started in the mid 80s, did not happen until decades later. Uh, so this is one of those things that we have to plan ahead. If we start planning ahead, this is great. You know, if we can start looking at other properties and say, you know, there's going to be a trail here, people are going to remember that. We can plan accordingly. So the priorities. We set up priorities for the loop trail. These aren't steadfast. These are just recommendations, what we thought would work well. Uh, the first priority would be the Wayne to Radnor Trail. Okay. That West Wayne, Wayne has a lot of people on there, a lot of users. It needs to be connected. We need to make it safe. Uh, the multi-use trail system, my personal favorite up in there. Uh, it has probably the best potential for all users. We're talking children, walkers, to joggers, to bike riders. Um, you're not going to get the, the aggressive road riders out there. It's just they avoid the trail. Um, as you, if you've been on riding trail, you see they're not out there you know, currently because it's just it's a slower walk. Uh, and then we're going to go to the, um, to the, the, the upper section. We broke it down into two sections just to basically keep the cost down and for it to work out in the connections. The third one is the Radnor Chester Road. Fourth would be Darby Gailey, and then Pike. And then with that, we're going to go into Greenways. I'm going to let people discuss about Greenways. The one of, one of, and I just mentioned on this on this system, uh, Jeff and I and, and others on our team, we met with PennDOT uh, because of, uh, many of the on-road trails would be on PennDOT roads. And PennDOT's very supportive of this. They gave us some guidance on the, on the master plan. They gave us some suggestions in terms of lane widths, et cetera. So, if the township is going to propose a trail on PennDOT roads, they have to they have to agree to it. And, and of course, PennDOT's number one mission is safety. Uh, so all the trails have to be designed to nationally accepted standards that had passed PennDOT muster. Keep in mind, this this master plan is just that; it's not an engineering document. So as those different segments get uh, funded, uh, the township will have to go through engineering for each one. And that's why this is probably you know, a 20 year project. Um, and I think we, we uh, you know, you can break those prices down in a number of ways. So it's it's really for the miles that you get, it's, it's uh, in the long term, if you look at the infrastructure, it's not a real expensive uh, proposition, even though the numbers seem high. In terms of the greenways, our team looked at all the different stream cars and drainage ways. And of course, today we recognize how important these are for water quality, even though I Sure, there are some people in Radnor on wells, uh, but most of you are probably in public water. But e even if you're on public water, it's very important to protect our water supply. And one of the ways that you do that is you protect the watershed. So um, uh, we've mapped those areas uh, that are important. And, and one of the recommendations is to have a 300 foot stream buffer to, to manage the vegetation within that, not to put legal constraints on because that would be difficult at best. But for the township to engage in public education programs, so if I'm a homeowner and I have a creek next to me, rather than cutting grass right up to the creek and getting all my good lawn doctor stuff into the creek, to maybe let the meadow go for as far as I can possibly do and let the natural maybe mow that once or twice a year if that's what I want to do. Or maybe if it goes back to a wooded type of thing, that suits my personal needs. But the main point here is to engage in public education to try to get as close to this as possible. And you're not going to make it everywhere. But if you can get uh, an owner, a homeowner, or a, an institution
institutional owner, if they have uh, gr ground on the stream, uh, to go back and to not manicure right to there. And this would even apply for township properties, like the willows is a good example, with the trees that go into the willows, not to, to mow, not to have a, a, a cultured landscape right up to the creek, but to have more natural vegetation. So that's the recommendation with the greenways, which is important. Um, as I mentioned, the report, uh, this crumpled copy is online, so you can review it on the township website. We have gone through a 45-day review. Certainly, um, uh, you know, we probably won't go to final printing until after the commissioner's meeting, which is the end of this month. So if we get some more suggestions uh, and, and the committee thought they made sense, we can certainly still incorporate those. Uh, you'll see in the report that the mapping uh, is broken down by uh, section, and we have um, uh, detailed maps for uh, each section of the report. The report's really laid out pretty nice. I'll just kind of on the map section and just hold it up so you can see that. You can probably come up after the take, take a look at these, and they're really quite nice. And I should mention, Jeff is also a great photographer, so there's some great shots of the township. Also in here are cost estimates. And you can see we've got pretty detailed with um, section by section of a cost in this thing because uh, it's really hard to predict how this system will be built. Uh, sometimes a particular neighborhood will get, get fire in their bellies and say, we want to go ahead with a section trail and come to the commissioners and they'll get funding for a section. And that might stand alone for some time. So we've broken this down into a lot of detail so that uh, as the township uses over the next decade or more, you don't have to come back and try to figure out where we got our numbers. It's all broken down. I mentioned uh, funding sources, and uh, even through the recession, uh, Pennsylvania has remained a very good source for funding. The Department of Conservation and Natural Resources has a dedicated fund that com comes from the real estate transfer tax, and every year uh, across the state, they distribute about $35 million in funding for different types of projects like this, some is acquisition, some is development. The township this year got a million dollars to per help purchase open space on the Androsson track set aside open space, so that's, you probably heard about that, that's the funding source. Uh, also, because our legislators, Democrats and Republicans together, have passed the transportation bill this year, we have money in our transportation program, they have a transportation alternatives program, uh, and that is real money. Uh, our office helped write two grants for two different clients, two townships, one Pottstown, one Soberry, where we got uh, nearly two million dollars, about a million for each of those clients um, for trail projects. So again, the environment is good, it's getting better, find money. DVRPC is gonna be very interested rather because it can be part of that, that circuit system. Uh, uh, Commonwealth Financing Agency, which is, I think, I think this is the, the Marcella Shale funding. Uh, there's money available there. Also, multi modal transportation fund with the same agency. Uh, PennDOT has other funds. Uh, if the federal highway bill ever gets reauthorized, there's a safe route to schools program. Uh, PennVest has money for drainage and stormwater management and stormwater, stormwater quality, excuse me, storm water quality improvements. So PennVest is a source. So there are lots of sources around. Uh, so it doesn't all have to be township money. Township money will certainly be involved, but the idea is to go out and get funding to bring your tax dollars back to this community rather than going to uh, two members or someone else. In terms of the major revisions, uh, these are just listed here. I'm not going to go through them, but these are the major revisions we made since the draft. Uh, and they were suggested uh, by committee members, by commissioners, by members of the public. Uh, and uh, um, so, so copy, I guess it's not online yet, but it'll go online when we're finished, we'll have these revisions in there. The, also, part of the task by DCNR was for uh, the committee, our committee, to do key person interviews. And you can see uh, some of the folks uh, that were interviewed, many of them, uh, several of the township commissioners were interviewed about this project, township manager, uh, Steve Beckley, who's with Delaware County, Planning Commission, 
Uh, we, we, we handled a lot of that trail work. Uh, Ken Cohen and Bill Carl, Paul Rulo from uh, the police department, etc. So they did do some interviews to get some more feedback about the trail uh, master plan. So as I mentioned, we're going to have a committee meeting next Wednesday the 17th to do the final tweaks. Uh, and then we're going to go in front of the board and we're hoping at that meeting that the Board of Commissioners will either adopt the plan or approve it, however they see fit, uh, so that, again, it's a planning document. It doesn't have legislative teeth. It's a guide for the township moving forward. And uh, uh, hopefully they will continue the work that they've done in terms of trying to get other funding to bring back here to, to start to build this over the next 20 years. So that's a... That, that is a, a really a quick summary on a very large project, and Jeff and I uh, maybe, maybe try to answer any questions that any of you have about the project. I don't know if this is too specific uh, for the group, but um, I represent Mainline School Night, and it looks to me that the, there's a proposed trail, but not a priority trail. So, what, Wait. pardon? I'm sorry, it? Mainline School Night is in Hartford Park. Okay. So there seems to be a proposed trail from the Radnor train station uh, running adjacent to the corporate center right. to Hartford Park. So right. Hartford Park is a 31 acre park. Yep. People were using a makeshift trail for many years, which has very recently been shut down by Bentley builders. Yep. I am getting so many people saying, you know, that's a, that's a right of way, Radnor Township owns this trail, you know, and we have people taking the train who can no longer now access Hartford Park or the education institution located Correct. within. Yes. It's like, it's a nightmare. So I wanna know how we can move that trail yeah. to a priority yeah. trail, given the recent circumstances. Well, talk to your commission. Pardon? Talk to your commission. It's basically, those priority trails really aren't priority. It's just the quickest way to get but if all the residents speak up that they want this, the commissioner will listen. Yeah. And then that's going to become a, a, a priority within the township. And that's a very short link. Sure. And it's, it would be very inexpensive. And I'm sure the township could make that happen, uh, maybe even with township funds as is. Uh, and and you're, you're probably aware of the whole confusion with that right away and why it was used, et cetera. And it went to court, I understand and everything. But the good news is we provided for that connection not going to be contested so it's not going to be contested no with permission from the corporate center yeah which have a lot of the land back there and they've been pretty you know, good now uh, even back in the days of sunoco they were great with the mm -hmm. township so something like that isn't going to really lose a lot of their land um, in fact they would benefit from it too. and would so you're talking about brandywine realty trust yes. so has there been discussion with them about, I mean, you not, said- Not specifically, I mean, again, my, my guess is, and we actually do work for them, very nice folks, very mm -hmm. civic minded in my experience, and my guess is, I mean, I don't want to speak for them, but my guess is they would probably donate the music to the township um, with, you know, some kind of rival and liability probably. But I, again, I would think that'd be a very positive, you get a very positive reaction, as Jeff mentioned, from them. I don't know who's the commissioner on that. Booker. Booker, Booker. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Just I want to thank the committee for working on this and doing such a thorough job. My question concerns something that you had just very briefly mentioned at the beginning, which is stormwater management. Is there a way that we can kind of incorporate that whole problem into this trail system, it would maybe help to alleviate some of the funding issues if there was a multi-purpose to um, the land that you're setting aside for, for trails? Yeah, again, that would be most applicable to off-road trails because if we're on road, we're on sure. an existing carpet. So, sure. so it takes off the, the roadways. Um, although it doesn't preclude long-term from doing something with them, but the likelihood is you're gonna do it on off-road. On off-road trails often, depending on the size of the project, and, and it sounds like you're familiar with stormwater regulations, if you're disturbing more than an acre, 
which a couple of these priority routes, the ones Jeff mentioned off to the, uh, to the upper right there, would probably disturb more than an acre of ground. And if you do, you have to get what's called an NPDES permit, which is National Pollution Discharge Elimination. Thank you. Discharge Elimination. Mm -hmm. um, and in that case, often, they will, the conservation district will require you to, let's say, as an example, have an infiltration trench right next to the trail where the water comes off the trail and goes into the trench. Typically, for systems like this, we don't usually recommend, and again, this is the engineering part, wouldn't recommend a pervious asphalt because there's a lot of maintenance with that. And for a narrow, you know, eight, eight or 10 foot section of asphalt, you're not creating a lot of runoff. And usually, if you have an infiltration trench next to the trail, you're gonna do just as good of a job as getting, you know, to get the water into the ground. So, those things almost are gonna take care of themselves with the engineering that's gonna to have to be done in the regulations. The other, the other way you can even emphasize that more, as I mentioned, PennVest, uh, which is the Pennsylvania Investment Fund, I guess it's, it's, that's the acronym for it, and they give out grants for stormwater quality uh, projects. And so the, the key to writing grants for something like this, and, and we, we did this on one grant with a park in Lebanon, Pennsylvania, is we made changes to a park, uh, and, and the changes we made, we took some, some of the asphalt, made it into green area, got the water into the ground, we actually got a half million dollars from PennVest to do that, to match the DCNR money from, from the parks. So the answer to your question is yes, those things have to be taken care of as part of the permitting process. And there'll be different ways depending on the engineering firm who's doing it at the point at that time, how they handle that and the size of the project. But it has to be done. It has to be done, just part of the permit. Go ahead. So once it's approved, yep. let's assume this gets approved, is that in the township? It's in their, it's their baby and they're gonna run with it? I mean. Well, well that would be the hope. I mean, you know, we, we've emphasized to the Board of Commissioners that, you know, after this board is not here anymore, hopefully the next board will take up the charge. And, and you know, we, we try to make the plan make sense and not try to avoid controversy. We have proposed trails in people's backyards or places where we would lose that battle mm -hmm. because we want successive boards of commissioners to say, hey, yeah, this makes sense to us and go forward. And as, you know, as just like the Radnor Trail, once that got built, people, the reason this is happening is because the Radnor Trail's there. And people realize it's a, it's a nice thing. Um, so, yeah, it's a guideline, it's a blueprint for moving forward. And as I said, we're hoping that uh, with all the other priorities the township has to deal with, they will apply for money this coming April. Uh, and if they're successful, if they go after trail money, if they're successful, uh, they might have a grant by uh, this time next year. Also, those other funds are available at different times during the year. And the township historically, from what I can see, is the first year about going after money. So, and and I, I, I think there's a recommendation, and it's not in here, we should make sure it's in here, that this committee, in some fashion, be maintained so that maybe they meet once a year or something sort of hold the commissioner's feet to the fire a little bit and say, hey, you know, we've made great progress this year, let's go after this this coming year, uh, because this is something that people have said they want. So it's just keeping it moving forward. Any other questions? Go ahead. I have sort of a selfish question, but I live on the eastern end of the township and um, would love to. The, the easiest way for me to get to the Radnor Trail is down Lancaster Avenue. Villanova down the Radnor Chester Road or Conestoga, neither of which are very desirable. Is, I couldn't tell in your presentation. Is there a wider, like putting a bike lane along, like, is there, like under the Blue Ridge on Lancaster Avenue, are they planning some kind of we, bike lane? We are going to go along, going to avoid the lane that stretch out the line. Ultimately, I know the, the R100 would maybe give that, but I mean the PNW. Hey, that's actually the biggest, well, one of the biggest pinch points in Radnor. Which is where Route 100 crosses over Lancaster. We're going to have to reutilize that sidewalk there. But it's at that point that we take the, road, the trail off road. And that goes up into the woods. It's hard to see it, but there's a lot of land back up in there. And there's also the, another bridge all to itself or a creek that goes over into the um, But it, it connects over there. So it's 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 but you're 
Are you asking the long line Casper? Well, I can't get from Villanova. Well, to what, the area. what we're suggesting from from Eichmann along the front of Villanova is to run the trail basically just wide that sidewalk in front of Villanova, run that all the way up, and then we have a little bit of a pinch point under the existing uh, R100 100 bridge. Yeah. We go through there because that's the only really feasible way. Yeah. But then once you're through there, you go further north and then up you know, towards to the high school and all that chew track. Oh, the chew track. Yes, yes, yes. correct. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. So, so from Ithan up, it won't be, it will be a pretty good connection. It's not a hard one to do. It gets a little dicey, you know, just in front of the, 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 the old uh, Royal Bank there. And, yeah, that I got. Yeah. I was just hoping they could sort of incorporate that dead space under the under the Bluebird overpass. Where the, where it's nice and wide by the Bluebird entrance, and then it gets really, the road narrows in, but there's all the, there's like 20 feet of just yeah. debris. Okay. We're going to avoid that intersection just because we can. Yeah. And uh, it's a lot, it's, it's a lot more space. I was involved with the uh, Redmond Trail. And the only thing that ever made it happen was persistence. And an extraordinary amount of persistence. And rallying people together. And we kind of just thought of ourselves as the apostles. We were out there like trying to get people to believe in what we believed in. And I think that, it, that that's incumbent on everybody who is interested in trail to start getting other people to say, you know what, have you seen the plan? You know, they're, they're planning something here or there or whatever. And try to, to uh, I mean, I think your idea is great for the trail from the uh, Radnor Station to the uh, Mainline School Night. And if you got a lot of people who go to school night to, you know, sign a petition, press the commissioners, just stand up and speak at meetings, which is what we did incessantly. I mean, we, we rarely missed a meeting. So I think that that's what needs to happen. If we, and I think that there are a lot of people who want to do it, and it's kind of like if you started, people come along with you. So I'm happy. Yeah, I mean, the other good thing in the trails, and we've been doing them for 20 years, they used to, it used to be like a bake sale mentality. It's like, well, if we have some extra money, we'll do it. This is something people really right. want and really value. And it be, it, in a lot of places, it becomes a real priority for, for folks. And, and for like officials, I mean, they have a lot on their plate, they're looking at a lot of things, but um, you think about how people in communities connect, and it's mainly through parks, or largely through parks and recreation and schools. Those are the two areas where you meet your neighbors, you know you, who, who's in your neighborhood, um, and parks are great because everybody's out there. I just want to mention Susan Byrne on the committee, she just came in, she's in the back, she was, also did a lot of work on the committee. Hi, Susan. If anyone has specific questions about really tiny spots, I would be more than happy to address them on the board. If it would help anyone out, if you want to get just a little bit of this. Yeah, and I'll just mention too, there's going to be a full report, which will look something like this, and then there's going to be an executive summary, which will, see how many attached wants to print, but this will be pretty widely distributed. This, this will be the thing most people get to read. It's a real quick summary, and uh, this will sort of be the promotional piece. So if somebody says, well, what's this all about? They can, they can get it in like five minutes. So, great. I think when you saw, saw the, how developed Radnor is, there are really not that many trails. I've been to places where there are a lot more trails, and I'm thinking these trails are needed, but there are a lot, many of the ones proposed seem utilitarian. There are beautiful spots in Radnor, like Golf Creek Road, I forget the name of the road. That, are, uh, that would be wonderful to have a little trail along because it's so picturesque. And I'm wondering what percentage, maybe it wasn't practical, thought was taken in, in making trails along those more picturesque or vista type. Or is it, that it's not? It's great that you mentioned Golf Creek because Pete and I, for decades, have talked about how much we love that. And it's always been a great road to drive down. It's a really wonderful road to ride down. Um, a little narrow yeah. for walk. Yeah, Radnor does have more than its fair share of really beautiful roads. Uh, Darby Paoli, gorgeous. Uh, it's fast but gorgeous. Um, so we do want to capitalize on that. We do want to be able to ride there. Um, a lot of these townships don't have them like we do. And we have lots of old houses. 
experience that you can't get in any other township except for the Now she mentioned Jeff's a grad resident, that's why he kept saying we. Yeah. So he's <laughs> saying he knows well, the, 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 the trails behind the willows down in the, the valley, but it, it's not it's not that easy to go down the hill from the parking lot to the other side. And it, it would be nice, and it's swampy at the bottom. It'd be nice if you could. And then along the side of the creek to get onto the other. Yeah, some areas it would be very expensive. And not right. Costly. But they're so beautiful. Yeah. It just seems that that should be maybe part of the idealistic conception of this plan as well as the. Yeah. Plan. It is. It, this is it's a, a network. Um, mm -hmm. We've always had the network uh, given to us as something that we were trying to connect. So we're trying to connect all these really great parcels, these great parcels, and get people to them so they can see them. Like the two track. Not everyone's going to the two track, but everyone should. Mm -hmm. It's wide. It's just that it's got wide more trees. There's just lots of old models. It's worth everyone. Yeah. Yeah. The, the other thing to keep in mind is, you know, we, we had a, th this is sort of within the township, These, this is the main trail system. For an area like the Willows and Skunk Hollow, there could be other trails developed over time. We couldn't get to that level of detail. One of the things the township's looking at is reassessing the entire park system through what's called a comprehensive park and rec plan, where you could actually go in and do conceptual plans for each of the parks. So it's a, it's a constant process of upgrading, and, and I think for a lot of natural areas, those would probably be the major improvements in some of those parks, the foot trails, just so people can walk, and if it's wet, maybe you have a little boardwalk or something. So, yeah. And, and also, the recent purchases by the township of Ardrossen happened while we were doing this. So that's not really, uh, since that hasn't actually happened for sure yet, I think that's happened soon. Though that will also be developed. I mean, there will be trails back there also that are part of Skunk Hollow and, uh, and uh, the Willows, and then further on to like the other, the cornfield and whatever that, that the township bought. So there will be trails in those places that you mentioned. And it is wet, I, I fell in the creek that there. <laughs> and, and right where I've got my point here, this is in Dross, and this is our best guess, based upon the early work that was done, that alignment will probably change. But that was just, Again, it's in the plan, but the details of that have to be worked out. Right. Well, I think they will give you access to the place if you like, because it is pretty big. Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, thank you all for your time. Appreciate it. Take a look on the web page, uh, and then probably in about a month, the final copy should be up. And if you have any comments, uh, let us know. Let your commissioners know that you like this idea. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you for all your work. Thank you. Thank you. And he's been great. They've just been so wonderful to work with. And as I said, you guys. No, no, no. You guys get all the credit. Wait a minute. We get all the credit. You get all the money. That's why we're consultants. That's right. Do you want to know what time it is? Good for you guys. You did a great job. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming. Yeah, we'll take questions. I have a comment or a question. Oh, yeah.